So hello everyone, my name is Leslie P. Abanse and um, right now, let me greet you first. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, whatever time it is you are accessing this video. So um, yeah, we are going to discuss now uh, multimedia design, principles of multimedia design. Um, probably many of us um, have encountered um, what is branded as um, Mayer's or Richard Mayer's 12 principles of multimedia media design as an instructor on before that as a student no, we probably have um, encountered a lot of presentations where um, it's it, it's uh, it isn't it didn't really they didn't really deliver as much knowledge and um we were confused we were left confused with um like with a lot of information and you know you see they didn't really apply on this um <coughs> Uh, principles so right now as, as we are instructors or teachers or probably uh, working in different um, organizations now we at least once probably have encountered um, this um, 12 principles of multimedia design by Richard Mayer so um, well even if we're not teachers we probably um, have a task to create videos um, images PowerPoints etc but most importantly um, it is best for us to effectively uh, deliver the intended pieces of information to our students and um, audiences also. So, so first off, let's just have an overview of um, um, the first six um, principles of uh, multimedia design by Richard Mayer. So, uh, one, we have multimedia principle. Two, we have um, coherence principle. Three, we have signaling principle. Number four is redundancy principle. And uh, five is spatial contiguity uh, principle. And number six is temporal contiguity principle. Um, for the seven to 12, Sir Angelica will definitely effectively um, discuss to you um, uh, how to apply all of those when we are um, designing our own uh, materials. So first off, we have um, multimedia principle. So it says here, oh, yeah, and I just um, added an image of literally multimedia, those um, materials that we use when we talk about um, multimedia. No, it says here people learn better when words are combined with pictures. So I am, um, as uh, personally, no, as audiences also we, we of course want to um to look at something, look at something, um not just words but with uh, accompanied by pictures. Now we better understand um the information when we um we we see words together with pictures. So um, that's. What first thing first um, that's what multimedia principle is um, suggesting next would be providing information in multiple uh, formats help learner helps learners um, understand and remember the content more effectively um, this is true no not um, when we uh, it's with texts alone no it's hard to remember what it what exactly says but when it is accompanied by um, visually um, visuals like uh, graphics or images no or videos we um, we tend to remember it more so uh, um, this uh, this first principle suggests that when visual aids are added to written language learning outcomes usually improve this means that um, we should incorporate spoken or written language as well as the visual materials like pictures, um, animations, and videos. And then because combining these methods um, will aid audiences' comprehension and retention of the material. Yeah, so we will, we should, um, we, I think we agree with this. So personally, I agree with this that I would remember more of what was discussed if, um, um, uh, like not just words fully in one slide no it is accompanied by um, by images no? um, I think we would uh, really remember it better and we would like carry the information with us no? we have something to remember when uh, we see multiple elements in one um, uh, in one uh, slide or like one presentation um, <clears throat> one uh, presentation at a time so yeah 
Next would be um, incorporate how to apply. Second, um, second step is to incorporate visuals to illustrate key points in the e-learning program. No, while it is also um, is very uh, much uh, suggested with this principle that we should we should um, for example use text and images at the same time. No, it's also important to like uh, you uh, how do I say this? Select. Um, <coughs> Uh, visuals that are matching with um, the text so that uh, you can um, how do I say this um, you can uh, emphasize what point it is so uh, yeah number three is instead of using images for the sake of it double check that the visuals clarify meaning or enhance comprehension no? um, following the second um, uh, step to um, application of this uh, principle now we should select the appropriate image to accompany the text not just um putting all images at once without um really having connection with the text or like um uh choosing graphics but then the narration is um is not really matching with the um graphics no at least we should um, while we use both um like two or three elements at once um i think we we, we should also be careful on how we um we would um, arrange it or like how would we might we how we would match it so that um it's not um we followed the principle really well and that um it's not it, it, it doesn't even it doesn't um uh, how do i say it doesn't um make it even worse no in in our comprehension the audience is comprehension the, the 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 main um uh the main suggestion of this multiple is for um stud uh, for student for audiences to better um understand with the help of uh, words and um images so um here is an example of a slide that is full of words now just looking at it is definitely information overload and it's just um so hard to take the information when we when uh, we see this just just one look and we see this it's, it's just a, it's so hard to just um, grasp and uh, <coughs> uh, think about this information now so um i um this next slide and this next uh, slide this is um like a suggestion no it doesn't really needed to be this ev everything it's um like this no but this here is an example you can choose between these two photos to at least um present the water cycle instead no just use of graphics or, or um, clip arts or images and then use some words to to accompany the the text no you can better present it and at least um you make sure you alone could see that uh, it is better than the other slide where it's just full of words no this is better um when we see it we can understand at least um we can see the the text we can read the text and then we can see the image so at least we our brain works like in a different um in different um, aspect like um one processes the image on one part we read and then yeah it goes on at um at least it, it's better than just reading all of this um one two three four no so yeah, this is this is basically what a multimedia principle, the first principle of Mayer's Richard Mayer's twelve principles. So um, yeah. So with this principle, we just have to um, uh, remember that um, when words are accompanied by images or animations, now it makes the material easier to understand, even from um, a, a kid to a someone professional. No. It, it makes it um, easier for them to understand the information that we deliver to them so yeah inst and instructors can support a wide range of learners by utilizing both words and visual aids so next would be next principle would be coherence principle so it says here eliminate irrelevant information that could divert learners from the primary message now the, the coherence principle is a straightforward concept that states it is um, ideal to focus on the essentials of a subject while learning new material and avoid becoming overly overwhelmed by unhelpful extras now if the first principle suggests that we could use two elements or two materials or three materials at once not to better um, 
to better show to the audiences or the students the information that we intend to tell them you know, it's it doesn't just stop there that we could use it and then it's good we also have to follow other we also have to, it also have to be accompanied by the following principles which is um most importantly this coherence principle which suggests that, that um doesn't necessarily mean that when you add pictures no it's good we also have to choose um the the exact and that that's the the images that are related or the text or the the voice over that we say are um the voice over that we um put uh, as, a, as an accompaniment <coughs> is exact and it's really and the information needed no it uh, we should not put uh how do I say it? Unrelevant, no, irrelevant, rather irrelevant um, information to accompany something that is that doesn't um, really connect with um, the narration. So yeah, um, this principle implies that learning resources must be precise. Yes, that's the word precise. Basically, no? this implies that learning resources must be must be precise and targeted. Now, only the most crucial details that are directly relevant to your learning objectives should be included. Now, for example, if you're learning about circles, that where's my sample here? And here's my sample. Now, if you are learning. Um, <coughs> And if you're learning about circles, now you'd only want to um, focus on the circle alone. Now, if you add all of these images, no, and you narrate all of these images, which basically is not really important, it's irrelevant too, because your focus is on the circles on one single subject. And if you put all of this, you include all the information regarding this, um, um this other shapes. No, it's 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 very irrelevant it's you're not being, being um, coherent with the information that you're t you're trying to tell your um audiences now they don't um you don't have to you don't have to um wait or like um, go through um a lot of extra stuff a lot of extra information to get to the important points of the circle no it's very irrelevant to the point of the circle no? so how to apply this second principle now number one it says here only include narratives if they are on point and support the learning goals now um yan kaya na sabi natin kanina pa ulit na sabi natin na it's good to use one two three uh, many elements but we also have to be really very careful that um those um that we use matches each other they are um, in unity and they are in harmony no instead of putting using images yeah but then um it doesn't really um connect with the words and it doesn't really um it doesn't really connect with the subject that you're talking about so um for example yeah, um here like another example if you put up dogs like we need to talk about talk about dogs you put image of dogs and then suddenly you also have picture of cats and then a lot of a lot of irrelevant uh, information images um on the sides on the, on the sides of the image no the main image no so you question it like what's the connection of all this um dog all of this um, other animals all of this irrelevant um information to the main subject no we have to make sure that it's very um, on point it's very important number two um, avoid using background music now if if your um, presentation if your design doesn't really um, doesn't really need a music no because there are presentations where you really need music for example a lot of videos too needed um, um, rightful um, background music no <coughs> but as much as possible no if it's not needed do not use background music third one third step now use simple diagrams and infographics now um, because our goal is to deliver the information effectively deliver the information now as as much as possible we use simple diagrams and um, um, those presentations those um, elements that are easy to understand because um, their, our goal our very goal is to uh, 
make it easy for them to understand no it's not our goal to um think very think like comprehend it use your brain or something like that it's our job when we present it's our job to um, have them uh take the information uh, really very well in a simple in a very um the simplest way possible no so yeah and that's the third um step to up the application of this coherence principle no uh, 